In the past year and a half, I have destroyed luxury bags that cost me over $50,000 at this point. And as many of you mentioned in the comments, my wife wasn't happy about this weird hobby of mine. Some of the bags were too cute and quite expensive. It took me a good while convincing her to let me chop them up. She's not really into luxury labels, but she's a very financially responsible person. Thank God. Otherwise, I would never be able to build a business without her finance savvy. Anyways, at some point during these convincing sessions, I came up with a solution to get myself permission to cut as many luxury bags as I can for the sake of entertainment. And the promise was that I will make a really nice looking sophisticated bag in a rare leather all by hand. This probably was going to be the best gift I have ever given to her. We're talking the highest caliber in leather bag world. Something like the ones Hermes offers to their super few customers at out of this world price points. But there was a problem. I have never seen one of those bags in person, let alone making it. It is not an easy thing to pull off and it requires years of passionate practice. As I was expanding my network in leather craft discussing leather with different artisans, I have met Peter Nitz through my podcast. This man was doing bespoke leather bags for the past 15 years at his atelier in Zurich for his elite customers perfecting his crafts. We connected really well with Peter and stayed in touch talking leather here and there. I have learned from his Instagram profile that he offers this week-long in-person courses teaching people how to make these bags. I have reached out to see if I could be one of his students. He told me that he was about to stop offering his course as he's about to launch a few new initiatives under his brand. But he also told me that I could be his last student if I could make time in January. And I jumped into this opportunity and packed my bags for a week in the most expensive city in Europe pushing my leather crafting to the next level with this master. I have arrived at Peter's workshop on a Monday morning and he told me that we need to get started right away if we want to finish it by Friday night. He pulled his pattern folder for his popular design dream bag in 25 centimeters and asked me what leather I want to use. As I've never worked with croc skin before, I wanted to go fancy. And luckily he had a beautiful color in stock that we could use for this project. We picked three medium sized skins out of the pack so we could use the prime parts of each for the main pieces of the bag. Now these skins are one of the most expensive in the leather world. About $1000 each and we used three of them. I'm already sweating with the thought of making a mistake along the process ruining these precious leathers. Then I wanted to use a popping red chevre leather as lining. Now I was familiar with this beautiful goat skin coming from France which is one of the most popular leather choices in high-end luxury goods. And last choice was the gold hardware to complement this luxury look. With leathers in hand we moved to Peter's atelier to start the process and he told me that all process will be done by hand. Now seeing that he doesn't even have die cutting blades made for his popular design, I knew we were in for a real handcrafting experience. We cut each piece to size using his patterns, then split them to precise thickness to start backing some of them to provide structural integrity. Even the backing material we are using in this bag that no one will see is a fancy leather. It's a box calfskin, which is also a common choice for high-end luxury brands to use as main leather in their products. Here, we are using it inside as a supporting wall. Peter is going all out, not worried about saving money on any ends. Next, we started making the handles, and the rest of day one went to prepare just the handles. Looking at the progress we had, it seemed like we may not be able to finish this bag by Friday. Then, day two started with a bit earlier with a slight jet lag, but there is no room for resting, so we got to work. As we started to assemble each main component, Peter explained his logic and techniques patiently until I truly understand why we do what we do. To be honest, I didn't expect I could learn that much in such short time, but he really wanted to pour his experience into you in five short days. The progress seemed a lot more promising as bigger parts of the bag started to shape up. There were three major things I was hoping to get a hang of as a result of this week, and they were saddle stitching, edge painting, and skywing. At the end of day two, I started to feel a bit more comfortable with my edge finishing. A very rewarding feeling to go home with after a very tiring day. Day 3 started with a lot more energy as I caught up with my sleep. I was super ready to prepare the main panels and attach the handles as this would mark past the halfway mark in this project. 
giving me more hope towards the finish line. My fingers aching from stitching, I came up with makeshift solutions to make it a bit easier and quicker to go on as I have a lot more stitching to be done as of today. But I was super happy as I lost my fear of the skiving machine. I got the idea of it with Peter's nice tips and by the end of day 3 I felt quite comfortable skiving these precious pieces. Progress was very satisfactory at the end of day 3, calling for a nice dinner. And even the snow didn't stop me and my brother from exploring some good food in Zurich with this good mood. Day 4 was a whole lot of stitching as we wanted to prepare the three main pieces to assemble in the last day. And that was the entire body panel and two gussets. And I finally got comfortable with the pain in my fingers after so much of stitching that day. As Peter told me that we were at a great place for completing the bag on our last day tomorrow and maybe even have some time to walk around the lake to see Zurich a little bit. And the final day started with attaching the gussets to the bag. I have been doing the saddle stitching for the past 4 days but this piece was the most demanding as I needed to make the holes one by one using a sharp owl before treading. The challenge was to handle one more tool in my hand in addition to the needles and making perfectly aligned holes across while not damaging the crock grain. I sweat the most at this part of the process. But once the gussets were sewn, the result was absolutely stunning. A whole week of hard work finally looked like it's worth it. The last piece was to finish the edge on the flap and we left that for the afternoon and decided to take a walk around Lake Zurich with Peter. The weather and scenery was beautiful. I was sad that I couldn't see much of Zurich, but I was also happy to know a great friend better while learning so much from him towards becoming a better craftsman. In the last day, I recorded a quick interview with Peter, learning how he got into it, why he still prefers to do all these things by hand and so much more. I'll make a separate video of that, but his story of stumbling into his calling of leathercraft 15 years ago is lovely. I highly recommend following his Instagram account to see what he is up to in his leather magic work. In the end, I was super happy to have this beautiful bag to fulfill my promise to my wife. After Zurich, I traveled to four more countries in Europe for another week, visiting tanneries, workshops and exhibitions. Overall, this was a dream trip for me in Europe. I soaked myself in the perfect leather gravy. I learned so much from fellow artisans and can't wait to share the rest with you in the following videos. I finally made it back home to my family with a proud gift in my hands. Now, my big promise is fulfilled. My wife will be supporting me on all future bag dissections according to our deal. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, until next time, stay leather tanned.